Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty powerful single board computer from Orange Pi known as the Orange Pi 5 Plus Pro. And I added the Pro on the end because this actually has 32 gigabytes of RAM. This is their newest board on offer. And having 32 gigabytes of RAM on an ARM-based single board computer is absolutely insane, but I personally really love the idea. Along with having 32 gigabytes of RAM, we've also got triple HDMI ports. It's got an eight core ARM SOC, which puts down some amazing performance. It supports an NVMe SSD, an SD card, or an eMMC module. I mean, there's tons of ways we can add storage to this. And they sent over the aluminum active cooler for this board. Taking a closer look here, I mean, as you can see, we've got tons of I.O., dual gigabit ethernet, triple HDMI, and the HDMI setup here is actually really interesting. Two HDMI videos out and one HDMI in. That way we could actually record another screen or kind of do a pass through with this board depending on the operating system you're running. And when it comes to storage, we can run our operating system from either a micro SD card, an eMMC module, or even an M.2 NVMe SSD. And of course, this board is coming in larger than the Raspberry Pi. Wanted to give you a comparison here between the new Raspberry Pi 5 Got a larger footprint, but we do have a lot more I.O. and we are working with a lot more power than the Pi 5 can put out. And speaking of the I.O., I've got a diagram here. We do have two USB Type-C ports. Now one is only going to be for power, but the other one is USB 3.0 Type-C and it also supports display out. Two USB 3.0 ports. It's got a built-in I.R. receiver, built-in microphone, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, 40 GPIO pins in the Raspberry Pi layout two full-size USB 2.0 ports, HDMI in, dual HDMI out, and dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Plus, it's got an M.2 E key up top for a Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth module, an eMMC interface, fan header, RTC header, and much more up top. But moving around back, you can see we've got that micro SD card slot and that M.2 NVMe slot. And getting right down to the performance specs, this is powered by the Rockchip RK3588S. This is an 8-core ARM SoC. We've got four Cortex-A76 cores at 2.4 GHz and four Cortex-A55 cores at 1.8. Mali G610 MP4 GPU. And this model that we're taking a look at, which I'm referring to as the Pro, has 32GB of LP DDR4X RAM. When it comes to the operating systems, we've got a lot to choose from between Linux and Android. Heading over to the Orange Pi website, heading down to the official images, you can see we've got OpenWRT, Orange Pi OS Arch, which is going to be their Arch Linux Orange Pi version, Orange Pi OS Droid, which is based on Android. This is the one we're going to be taking a look at in this video. I will test more out if the interest is there. Just let me know in the comments below. They've got an Ubuntu image, Debian, and a regular Android image. But checking out the third-party images, we've even got more to choose from. Sent OS, Rocky Linux, Kali, Diet Pi, Open Fade, Ubuntu, Windows on ARM, which I've been working on trying to get to run. I've been having a lot of issues. There's a lot of stuff that's not working there right now, and that's one of the big reasons I haven't done a video yet. And Red OS. So when it comes to operating systems, I mean, we've got a ton to choose from here, and we're getting some really good performance with a lot of this stuff, but even when it comes to GPU drivers, I've always had much better luck with these using Android itself, and that's why we're going to be using Orange Pi OS Droid. And just to give you a better idea here, it's not just a base version of Android. This is more of a desktop style operating system, which uh, does function really well on the RK3588. And just to get the best I.O. performance out of this board, I would highly recommend using an SSD. I just went with a simple Kingston 512GB M.2 SSD. And that's what we've got Orange Pi Droid installed on. Okay, so here we are with Orange Pi OS. And like I mentioned, there are two versions. We've got the Droid version here, which is based on Android 12. And uh, we've got a real nice desktop experience here. So right down here, we've got our taskbar, app panel. And uh, I actually do like the way this is set up. We'll go into the settings real quick. You can see, pretty nice little setup. And it's really easy to navigate with the mouse and keyboard. Uh, windows are resizable. So from here, we can take them up. Now, unfortunately, there's no snap like some of the other Android desktop operating systems. Kind of wish there was. But right now, we've basically just got resizable windows. 
and this does support OTA updates. In fact, after I installed this, booted it up for the first time, got connected to the internet, We've got an update here, and it does fix a few bugs that they had. They also have a full change log when you're about to update, so you can actually skip it, or you can go ahead and download it. So straight out of the box with this operating system, we do have Google Play installed. Really nice, so we don't have to sideload anything. You can if you want to, but we've got access to Google Play, so we can download a bunch of games and applications to test out here. I've got a few that we're going to be testing out here, but the first thing I wanted to take a look at was some video playback. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to the Widevine level here, it's level 3, which means we're not going to get HD content in applications like Netflix, Hulu, or HBO. But for something like YouTube, we can actually go right up to 4K with it. And I am sitting at 1080p on the resolution of this screen. Show you real quick. Advanced. 4K, and I am having an issue with Stats for Nerds. I cannot get it to come up, and I do have it enabled, so it's just not showing up here for some reason. We'll go ahead and play this, and the RK3588 has always been a really great chip for 4K video playback. The manufacturer states that it will do 8K video. Now, I've never really been able to test 8K on a real 8K monitor, but I know for a fact in Android with this SoC, we get some amazing 4K 60, even HDR video playback. Now we're going to move over to some gaming and emulation, and we're going to go with some native Android games first. I've got a few things downloaded here, and I think the first one we're going to try is Asphalt 9. So far, it's actually looking really good to hear. I didn't go into the settings and turn it up to maximum or anything. I think it looks great at 1080p. And by the way, for all of these games, I will be using an Xbox controller connected over USB. Now we do have the option to add Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to this board, but unfortunately it doesn't come pre-installed, so you will need to use wired or go ahead and install a module. Also tested out Stardew Valley and Dead Cells. Both of them run phenomenal on this board. So let's take it up a little bit. One game that I always like to test here is Call of Duty Mobile. This isn't the hardest game to run, but as you can see, I mean, it's doing it really well. And from the settings, I took the frame rate up to high and the settings to medium. So we're at medium 60 FPS. And yeah, this is definitely running at 60 on this little board. Feels pretty good on this thing. Even Genshin Impact would run at 30 FPS low on this board, but since we don't have official controller support, I didn't even bother. But the next thing I wanted to test out was some emulation. We're starting off light here with Dreamcast using the Redream emulator, Crazy Taxi 2. I just took it up to 1280 by 960, and this board can definitely handle Dreamcast, whether you want to use the Redream emulator, which you're seeing right now, or you could use the standalone Flycast or even RetroArch with the Flycast core. PSP is another one that functions really well on this. We've got Chains of Olympus, Vulcan Backend, 2X Resolution. When this chip was initially released, even in Android, we actually had to take this down to 1X. So, uh, you know, performance has definitely been upgraded. I think it has a lot to do with the emulator itself as opposed to driver updates for this chip. And I also wanted to test out some GameCube and Wii using the Dolphin emulator. Now this chip isn't going to run every single GameCube or Wii game. There are some that this really struggles with. F-Zero GX on the first track actually works pretty decently at 1x resolution with that Vulcan back in, but then as soon as you move over to Fire Field, really does fall on its face. But games like Time Splitters 2, even Mario Galaxy will be playable, and there's some great Wii games that you could play on this board also. We've got Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, and I don't test a lot of Wii games on these because a lot of them really relied on motion controls. There are a few good ones that you can use a GameCube controller with, and I just find it a lot easier to go ahead and boot those up. But overall, I mean, we're actually seeing some pretty decent performance here with the GameCube emulator. And this isn't the one from Google Play. I always head over to the Dolphin website, download the latest development build for Android. It's got all the latest fixes. So yeah, performance with this board is looking awesome here with Android. Now, I've also been doing some Linux testing, and there's much more we could do over there, but I figured I'd go ahead and show this off first because we've got that desktop-style Android interface. It'd just be a lot easier for new users to get into, but if you're interested in learning a little more or maybe pick one of these up, I will leave some links in the description. And if you're interested in seeing any of the available operating systems running on this, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, and like always... Thanks for watching.